Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Marshmi Das, and today I'll be talking about the last part on the anatomy of nose, which is the lateral wall of the nose. Now, this is a very important question, which comes as a long question in uh, the theory examinations. So we need to know a lot in details about it. So let's start our class now. So let's start our class today. Our topic today is about the lateral nasal wall. Now this is a very important topic for us to know because there's a myriad of structures in the lateral nasal wall which leads to a lot of pathologies. So first we need to know what is the normal structure. So let's start now. So the lateral nasal wall consists basically three and occasionally four turbinates or concha. Now what are turbinates or concha? These are basically scroll-like bony projections which get covered by mucous membrane. And these structures are filled with vascular channels and venous sinusoids which serve an important function. So the function here is that these serve to warm and humidify the air and modify the nasal airflow resistance. So not only the concar turbinates but we also find meatus in the lateral nasal wall. What is the meatus? It is basically the space between the lateral nasal wall and the inferior, middle and superior turbinates which is called the inferior, middle and the superior meatus respectively. And as you see in the picture over here, these structures scroll like projections, bony projections which are covered by nasal mucous membrane. These are all the turbinates as you can see over here and you will see it right over here in the space, these spaces between the tur turbinates and the lateral nasal wall are the spaces that we describe as the meatus. So as we have established so far, there are, there can be three to occasionally four uh, turbinates which is uh, inferior, middle, superior and supreme turbinate. And there are three meatuses, the inferior, middle and the superior meatus. So we'll be talking about each one of them at a go. So the inferior turbinate, it is a separate bone. And why do we really need to know that is because the middle turbinate and the superior turbinate, they are actually not separate independent bones. They are a part of the ethmoid. So the inferior meatus, which is the space in between the lateral nasal wall and the inferior turbinate, you will see in the picture here, is the lateral nasal wall, sorry, yeah, this is the lateral nasal wall and this is the inferior turbinate. So the space in between this is basically the inferior meatus. Why we need to know about the inferior meatus is that a very important structure opens onto the space which is the nasolacrimal duct. The nasolacrimal duct drains into the inferior meatus approximately 1 cm posterior to the head of the inferior turbinate. You have to remember this, this is very very important. And this opening it is guarded by a, at its terminal end by a mucosal valve which is known as the Vasner's valve. So you know what this nasolacrimal duct is actually a, a part of the lacrimal drainage system and it is continuing from the nasal sac over here and ultimately draining into the nose. So and interestingly you'll see when, when we are emotional and we are crying the drainage system we have also seen that our nose also starts watering. It is because of this fact it's because the lacrimal drainage system is ultimately connecting the eye to the inferior meatus because of which when we are crying a lot these tears are getting drained into the nose and hence our nose also starts watering. Next we move on to the middle turbinate. Middle turbinate is a very important part because a lot of structures will be found here. The middle turbinate is actually a part of the ethmoid bone as I just told you right now. It is attached to the lateral wall by a bony lamella which is called as the ground or the basal lamella. 
So the uh, it is interesting to know that the attachment of the middle turbine it is actually not straight. It is actually in the form of an S shaped. If you see in the picture over here, this right here is the attachment of the middle turbine. So we can divide its attachment into three parts. So in the anterior third, as you see, it lies in the sagittal plane. This part is the first part, the anterior third was lying in the sagittal plane and it is attached to the cribriform plate at the junction of the medial and lateral lamella. In the middle third you will see which is right over here this particular portion it is lying in the frontal or the coronal plane and here it is attached to the lamina papyracea. This part this particular second part it is separating the anterior ethmoidal cells from uh, uh, from uh, this is this region would be the anterior ethmoidal cell and this will be the posterior ethmoidal cell. So this particular part is separating the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal cell and because this second part this middle third is the part that is stabilizing the middle turbinate it is also called as the ground labella or the basal lamella. And lastly in the posterior third as you can see over here it is running horizontally and is attached to the lamina papyracea and the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone extending up to the roof of the posterior quana. Next comes the middle meatus which is basically the space in between the middle turbinate and the lateral nasal wall. Now this is the most important part of the nose that you have to study about because most of the drainage of sinuses occurs in this region. So this is basically how the first thing that we need to know is something which is called as the osteomatal complex. So what is the osteomatal complex? It is basically consisting of a particular uh, number of structures in the middle meatal region. The first thing that is forming the osteomatal complex is most anteriorly you will find a ridge which is known as the uncinate process. If you were to look in the picture here you would see this right here is the uncinate process. So this is anterior, this is posterior, this is medially and this is laterally. So this here is the nasal septum over here. So the most anterior portion, uh, anterior structure that you found, find in the middle meatus is the uncinate process which is this structure. Next behind it we find a very well pneumatized and the most constant anterior ethmoidal cell which is called the bulla ethmoidalis. The structure labeled as B over here this is the bulla ethmoidalis also known as the ethmoidal bulla. It is the most constant anterior ethmoidal cell. Now both of these structures as you see in the diagram over here there is a space there is a space semilinear groove in between the uncinate process and the bulla ethmoidalis. This semilinear groove is actually called the hiatus semilinaris as you can see over here. So this is the hiatus semilinaris. And you can see in the picture right over here the hiatus semilinaris as actually a two dimensional structure and in, when this hiatus leads to a three dimensional space right over here which is known as the infundibulum. So you see over here this is the uncinate process, this is the bulla ethmoidalis. The space in between them is a semilinear groove which is known as a hiatus semilinaris which is a two dimensional structure and that itself drains into a three dimensional space which is known as the infundibulum. So the uncinate process, the bulla and the intervening hiatus semilinaris and the infundibulum they form a very key area which is known as the osteomatal complex where the frontal, the maxillary and the anterior ethmoidal sinuses are draining into. You can see right over here this region is the osteomatal complex. So we will be discussing each structure now. 
So first is the uncinate process. So as I was telling you, it is a sickle shaped bone which is running from an antero superior to a postero inferior direction. As you see over here, from an antero superior to a postero inferior direction, it's a sickle shaped bone. The postero superior border is sharp and it runs parallel to the anterior border of the bulla ethmoidalis. It attaches inferiorly to the inferior turbinate and the palatine bone and anterior superiorly to the lacrimal bone. The uncinate, it is, it is having also the uncinate together with a fold of the mucosa which is known as the anterior and the posterior fontanelle, they cover the opening of the maxillary sinus. So this is about the uncinate process. What we need to know about the uncinate process is its attachment which is very very variable. So the upper attachment of the uncinate process it has a lot of variation and it can attach into the different structures like the lateral nasal wall or the medial orbital wall or it can go upwards to the base of the skull or it can also go medially into the middle terminate. And because of the difference in the attachment, this accounts for the variation in the drainage of the frontal sinus. So we need to know all these drainage processes. So in maximum num number of cases, which is in about 85% cases, it has been seen that the uncinate process inserts into the medial orbital wall. So this is the first picture over here where it attaches to the medial orbital wall. And in this case, therefore, the frontal recess drainage pathway will be medial to the uncinate process. Next, uh, the uncinate process has also been seen to have an attachment to either the skull base or the middle turbinate. You can see over here in this picture that uh, this is the skull base where the uncinate process is getting attached to or it can also get attached to the middle turbinate which is right over here. So in these, these both the cases together they combine about the other 15% of the cases and because of this attachment the frontal drainage pathway will be lying lateral to the uncinate process. But however there's also been a recent study which has actually shown that the uncinate process can have more than one attachment in about 50% cases. So it can get attached to the medial in this picture is in this picture you can see it can get attached to the medial orbital wall to the skull base and also to the middle middle turbinate at the same time. So this is about the attachment of the uncinate process. The next structure that we need to know about is the hiatus semilunaris inferior. So when I was telling you about the hiatus semilunaris, how it is a semilunar groove in between lying, it is a two dimensional structure which is lying in between the, uh, the uncinate process in front and the bulla ethmoidal is behind. This hiatus semilunaris inferior is actually, uh, it is known as hiatus semilunaris inferior. So that also means that there will be a hiatus semilunaris superior. And that's something I'll tell you about in a little bit. So this hiatus is actually a two dimensional space about having a one to two millimeter width. And it is a gap in between the anterior border of the bulla ethmoidalis posteriorly and the uncinate process anteriorly. And the hiatus, it leads into the infundibulum, which is a three dimensional space in the middle meatus. Next we come to infundibulum. So this picture you can see this is the hiatus semilunaris lying in between the bulla over here and the uncinate process in front. So now the infundibulum it is a space which is limited medially by the uncinate process and the frontal process of the maxilla sometimes the lateral lacrimal bone and laterally by the lamina papyracea. The natural ostium of the maxillary sinus is situated in the lower part of the infundibulum. So you can see in the picture, this is the ethmoidal infundibulum, this structure over here. So the opening of the maxillary, the natural ostium of the maxillary sinus is seen in the uh, lower part 
of the infundibulum you can see right over here and accessory ostium or the maxillary sinus is seen in the anterior or the posterior fontanelle so infundibulum is uh, important in the fact that the natural ostium of the maxillary sinus is situated in this lower part of the infundibulum next is the bulla ethmoidalis the bulla is actually the largest and it is the most consistent anterior ethmoidal air cell which lies behind the uncinate process and i already told you the anterior surface of the bulla is forming the posterior boundary of the hiatus semilunaris inferior and now since i told you the bulla ethmoidalis is actually an anterior ethmoidal air cell so it has a variety of pneumatization depending on this pneumatization it can either be a pneumatized cell meaning a air filled cell or if it is not pneumatized it can also be a solid bony prominence sometimes the bulla it may extend superiorly to the skull base and posteriorly to fuse with the ground lamella and in rarely in about 8% cases we have seen the bulla is rudimentary or absent why is the bulla important to us it's because the complete removal of the bulla is very critical to define the medial orbital wall as a landmark next we move on to the sinus lateralis of crane wall that sounds like a very complicated name but it's actually something very easy to understand when there is a space above or behind the bulla so i told you the bulla is actually a air cell like here this is the uncinate process so if there is any space which is lying above or behind the bulla this will be known as the suprabullar recess and the retrobullar recesses respectively so both of these recesses together they form the lateral sinus or the lat sinus lateralis of cranwall now the bulla is separated posteriorly as i told you the bulla uh, is uh, the crown lamella lies behind the bulla so the bulla is getting separated posteriorly from the ground lamella which is this and uh, this space in between which is forming is the retrobullar recess and the suprabullar recess is uh, separating the bulla from the base of the skull above so these two recesses together as you can see they are forming a semilunar structure and this structure is what is known as the sinus lateralis of cranwald so you can see here boundaries of this is superiorly lies the skull base in this picture over here i can show you this here is the suprabullar recess and this here is the retrobullar recess just above and behind the bulla so superiorly this is separating above from the skull base laterally lies the lamina papyracea medially lies the middle turbinate inferiorly lies the bulla ethmoidalis so next we move on to another structure which is the hiatus semilunaris superior so as i was telling you earlier if there is something called hiatus semilunaris inferior there must also be something called a hiatus semilunaris superior so what is it it is basically a cleft like communication between the bulla and the skull base and opening into the middle meatus so sinus lateralis of grand wall it opens into the middle meatus by a semilunar cleft which is opposite in orientation to the hiatus semilunaris inferior which is why this space is known as the hiatus semilunaris superior so if we were to see the picture over here you can see this is the infundibulum this here is the infundibulum and this here is the hiatus semilunaris inferior lying in between the uncinate process and the bulla ethmoidalis whereas right over here we can see this here is the hiatus semilunaris superior which is opposite in direction to that of the inferioris so the hiatus semilunaris inferioris leads into the infundibulum whereas the hiatus semilunaris superioris 
it leads on to the sinus lateralis of gran wall which is over here. This hiatus semilunaris superior is absent when the bulla is attached either to the base of the skull superiorly or to the ground lamella posteriorly. What this means is that at any point of time in many patients we can see that the suprabullar recess and the retrobullar recess if these two structures are absent then there will actually be no space which is this uh, uh, hiatus semilunaris superior. Next we move on to frontal recess. A frontal recess is actually a very important structure we need to understand to understand the drainage of the frontal sinus. It is situated in the anterior part of the middle meatus. So this over here this region is the frontal recess this over here. So the boundaries of the frontal recess are medially lies the middle turbinate laterally lies the lamina papyracea, anteriorly lies the agar nasi cell and posteriorly lies the bulla ethmoidalis. So you can see over here anteriorly lies the agar nasi cell over here and posteriorly lies the bulla ethmoidalis and superiorly the frontal recess opens via the frontal ostium. This over here is the frontal recess which opens superiorly via the frontal ostium into the frontal sinus. So we see as you see in this picture this is the frontal sinus. This is the ostium of the frontal sinus via which it opens into the frontal recess. So as you can see from the structure over here these three things in sagittal cross section they are seem to be forming uh, an R glass configuration and these three structures therefore they have this very peculiar relationship to each other. And as I told you already before the frontal sinus drainage pathway gets decided by the upper attachment of the uh, uncinate process. So in case the uncinate process it uh, lies uh, uh, if the uncinate process is attached to the cribriform plate the frontal sinus will drain into the infundibulum. If the uncinate process gets attached to the lamina papyracea the frontal sinus will drain medial to the infundibulum and in such a case the infundibulum will lead up to a blind recess which is known as the recessus terminalis. Next is a structure which is known as the atrium of the middle meatus. The atrium is basically the shallow depression which lies right in front of the middle turbinate and above the vestibule. As you see in this picture over here this is the middle turbinate right in front of it and right above the vestibule it is a shallow depression which is known as the atrium of the middle meatus. Next is the agar nasi cell is which is basically an inner elevation which lies just anterior to the attachment of the middle turbinate over here. When it gets pneumatized it contains air cells it is known as the agar nasi cell which communicate with the frontal recess. So importance of this is fact that an enlarged agar nasi cell may encroach on the frontal recess area causing it to constrict and leading to mechanical obstruction to the frontal sinus drainage. As I showed you when I was talking about the frontal recess how it is lying in close relation to the agar nasi cell which is uh, you can see in this picture over here this here is the agar nasi cell. If it is enlarged it can cause a mechanical obstruction to the frontal sinus drainage pathway. Next is the superior turbinate. Now the superior turbinate is also a part of the ethmoid bone and it is situated posterior and superior to the middle turbinate. It may also get pneumatized by one or more cells and this uh, superior turbinate is important landmark to identify the ostium of the sphenoid sinus which lies just medial to it and uh, just below the superior turbinate lies the superior meatus. And this is a common drainage pathway 
of the posterior ethmoidal air cells. Next we move on to the spinoethmoidal recess. The spinoethmoidal recess lies above the superior turbinate and this is the space where the spinoid sinus opens into it. So if you see over here, this over here is the spinoethmoidal recess and you can see right over here the opening of the spinoid sinus. And lastly, as I was telling you, there may sometimes be a fourth turbinate known as the supreme turbinate. It is sometimes present above the superior turbinate and has a very narrow meatus beneath it. The ostium of the spinoid sinus, as I just told you, lies in the spinoidal recess, which lies medial to the superior or the supreme turbinate. Next, we move on to the blood supply of the lateral wall. Now, as, as the nasal septum, the lateral wall also gets a supply from the internal carotid and the external carotid system. So, from the internal carotid system comes two branches, which is the anterior ethmoidal artery and the posterior ethmoidal artery. Whereas, the external carotid system, it gives rise to the posterior lateral nasal branches from the spinopalatine artery, which is here. The greater palatine artery coming from the maxillary artery, the nasal branch of the anterior superior dental artery and branches of facial artery to the nasal vestibule. So, these are the total uh, arteries which are supplying the lateral wall. And lastly, what we need to know is the plexus which is known as the Woodruff's plexus. It is a plexus of veins which is situated inferior to the posterior end of the uh, in inferior turbinate. So, this is the inferior turbinate just posterior to it lies the Woodruff's plexus and this is a site of posterior epistaxis in adults. So, this completes all that we need to know about the lateral nasal wall, all the different turbinates, all the meatuses, the structures which are uh, comprising the meatus is especially in the middle meatus which has the osteomatal complex, all the different structure, why is it important, its orientation and uh, overall it is this is something that uh, is usually asked in a long question in theory examinations. So, thank you guys for watching, please, please, please subscribe to my channel and share my videos with your friends if you have liked them. I will see you in my next video.